Hi, and welcome to What Are You Reading, a podcast with the Public Library of Mount Vernon in Knox County. My name's Christy. And I'm Katie. And today, we're going to be discussing a couple books that Mm -hmm. um, we... I personally had a favorite author in YA that I was really excited about, and um, she made the jump to an adult fiction novel. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we were kind of just like wandering around the library looking for books, and this cover that Katie picked Mm -hmm. caught my eye. Isn't that an awesome cover? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's... It covers a lot of the checks a lot of the boxes for me. Yeah. Um, I do needle needlework and embroidery and stuff. And I also am at least appreciative of Jane Austen. And that's what this Pride and Premeditation is kind of a reworking of Pride and Prejudice, mm-hmm. but it's a murder mystery. Ooh. Yeah. That's exciting. Um Mine is also like a, a murder mystery type situation, which I didn't necessarily know going into it. Um, and I chose Book of Night by Holly Black. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, this is her first foray into um, the adult world. So huge fan of her YA and middle grade um, writing. Mm-hmm. And she's a pretty prolific author. So when we got the news she was releasing this, this has been on my TBR my to be read uh, for like years. Like I think it was announced like at least a year ahead of time. And so like instantly on Goodreads, right? Like mm-hmm. save, save. I can't wait for this to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was kind of a no brainer for me to pick this month. Mm-hmm. Um, what actually happens here in your Pride and Premeditation? So um, if you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, totally fine. Okay. Um, if you have... I think you get a little more from it because it's the first in a series and I started a uh, sense and second degree murder. Oh, that's which clever. Is the second one. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, which I have not read sense and sensibility. So mm-hmm. I'm not enjoying it quite as much as this one. Sure. But I feel like if I had read sense and sensibility, I would get more out of it. But th- this is a lot of fun. So, um, J- or Jane, there is a Jane, but that's not the main character. Um, Oh, and I have to redo the first line. Okay, awesome. Because that, like, sets the tone for, like, the entire book. Um, And Pride and Prejudice has a really well-known first line about um, if a man is wealthy, he's looking for a wife. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, the author took the words and kind of made it fit to what she's working on in this book. Okay. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a brilliant idea conceived and executed by a clever young woman must be claimed by a man. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, so that's that's how it starts. Um, and her, uh, Mr. Bennett, is actually a barrister, so okay. which is a fancy British word for lawyer. Um, so he has his own law firm. Mm-hmm. And Lizzie helps out, even though she's not supposed to, because she's a girl. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mr. I always forget his last name. Mr. Collins is the. And I lost the other word. He's <laughs> one step. He's like what a paralegal would be for oh, us. Okay, sure. Um, and so when the book starts, Lizzie has basically exonerated their client but mr collins takes credit for it oh okay so that's how it starts and so lizzie is trying to prove herself so that her dad will give her a job and then she gets a hot tip that someone has been murdered and actually mr bingley who if you've read Pride and mm-hmm. Prejudice is like the main love interest for one of Lizzie's sisters is blamed for the murder. Oh. So she has to try and get him acquitted. Mm-hmm. And the conflict with Mr. Darcy is he works as like a paralegal at his father's firm and he's friends with Mr. Bingley. So it's like you can't defend my friend i'm gonna defend my friend Mm -hmm. and she's like well you're doing it wrong (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome yeah so that causes the tension and this Mm -hmm. is a ya book 
Um, so it's not too graphic. Um, it does have a little bit of that romance still from from the book, but it, mm -hmm. it's more. It's not. I can't wait to marry him. Sure, yeah. kind of stuff. Um, and they they call people who like Jane Austen J knights. Mm -hmm. If you are a J knight, keep in mind that she uh, Tears of Price took some liberties, and she did write a note in the back. Because her story could go no, nowhere, really, if she completely followed the society of the time. Mm -hmm. Because there would be no way that, like, Charlotte could have a job outside the home. Sure. Or Lizzie could work for a barrister in any capacity. Mm -hmm. So she had to... Yeah, she had to take some liberties. Yeah, she had to play with the history a little bit. Sure. But um, for the most part, it is true to the time period. That's so, great. And yeah, all of your favorite characters from Pride and Prejudice are in it. That's, re that's really fun. Yeah. I, I love, you know, and I think we've talked about this on our show before, um, you know, doing retellings. Mm -hmm. Is something that I've always found really interesting. Same. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, a good fairy tale retelling or mm -hmm. um, just changing it up a little bit makes makes it exciting all over again. And I often find that when I finish reading this, I'm like, oh, I got to go back and reread the original text again. Yeah, yeah, and that might be what happens with Sense and Second Degree Murder. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll read the Sense and Sensibility um, because some of it's a little. It's a little bit more confusing than this one, but mm -hmm. I don't have anything to base sure. on this. Yeah. So, but yeah, as long as the, I love retellings, as long as they are true enough to the original, mm -hmm. that they're not like completely going off the wall and it's like all the characters' names are the same, but that's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was, I, I think Jane would be okay with it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that you can... You know, kind of have that little stamp of approval there. And that you liked it enough that you want to pick up the next one. Yeah. That absolutely. says a lot. Yeah. And actually, Christy found... This was the one that Christy found. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's a that's a number two. I need to find number one. Because you never know with the series. Yeah. In, in this series, you can start wherever. Because it is very... That's one thing that I wish that she had done was take, like... Lizzie and Darcy in this book and added them to this one. Oh, that's a good idea. To like tie them together a little bit. Yeah. But um but yeah, they're they're good and they're they're basically standalones. The only thing that's like ties them together is that they're Jane Austen books mm -hmm. that are turned into murder mysteries. Oh, no, that's pretty cool. And mm -hmm. you know, you like you said you don't necessarily have to have read the original text, so you're able to jump right in no matter what. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned you know, I try not to get too wrapped up in a good cover, but like mm -hmm. walking around the library, right? We work here. So a lot of times we'll just kind of get up, move around a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. check out the shelves, see what we have, check out the new tables, see mm -hmm. what's going on. And these covers are just so gorgeous that it couldn't help but, you know, pick mm -hmm. it up. And sometimes that leads you to just an awesome book. So, oh, yeah. I know you're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but like. We won't tell. It's fine. Yeah, this is a train house. It's fine. <laughs> this is a safe space. That's right. We're safe here. You guys are safe in the comments. Let us know. You know. Yeah. Are you guilty of that too? Yeah. We won't judge you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And speaking of covers, yours right? is really Wait, interesting too. So pretty. In a and completely different way than these. It is. And I have to say, um, we do have this at the library. Um, it And it is available on multiple platforms. Um, this is my personal copy, so I have to show you guys the cover, too, because underneath the dust jacket, like, how Ooh. isn't that, like, yeah. so pretty? And I'm a sucker for that, because a lot of times when I, when I do purchase a book, most of the time I will check out a book at the library and read it, see if I like it, because I have limited shelf space. Mm -hmm. I just have, you know, so mm -hmm. many books, yeah. um, not a big enough house, mm -hmm. so if I like it enough... I read it here, return it, I'll go to the bookstore and purchase it. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, and then mm -hmm. I just love having that that hardback cover in my collection. It looks really nice on my shelf. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so I picked um, Book of Night by Holly Black this month, mm -hmm. um, which, like I've mentioned a couple times before, first foray into adult lit. Um, this is a really interesting story. We meet our main female lead. Her name is Charlie Hall, and she is a retired thief. 
Mm. And um, she is very interesting because who she worked with are what are called glamis, which are magicians that work in shadow manipulation. So in this world, your shadow is very important because it can help you. It can also hinder you. So it, um, if you're a magician or somebody that works with shadows, you are able to make deals to maybe have it work for you. So hmm. if you're on the dark side of things, it can maybe get into a locked room and hurt someone that you wanted to hurt or steal something that you wanted to steal. Hmm. So Charlie is used by these magicians that uh, want to get into a place that they might not be able to get into. So she is a you know great at picking locks. She's really good at getting into little places and stealing things, and you know kind of helping them get this power through usurping other people's shadows. Mm. Mm -hmm. When we meet her, she's like I said, kind of retired. She's decided to be a bartender. Like she just wants to lay low because stuff was getting really complicated in the magic world. Mm -hmm. Stuff was getting a little darker than she wanted it to get. So she retires to be a bartender. Well, of course our main character has a tough time with choices she makes with being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm. On her way home one night, she witnesses a murder that's connected to her. She can't let it lie. Mm. She has mm -hmm. to investigate. And here we go back into the, you know, into the underworld, dealing with these magicians again, dealing with, um, you know, trying to keep your shadow, losing your shadow to some of these, you know, nasty characters that are trying to gain all this power in this magical mm -hmm. framework. Yeah. Um, it was, I will say this, there were mixed reviews. Okay, so like I said, we were all very excited. If you're a huge Holly Black fan, um, she's really, really famous for um, her fairy uh, books. So she mm -hmm. has this entire series that's set in the fairy world. So there's a lot of folklore, uh, a lot of material around the fae already to work mm -hmm. from. Holly is creating a completely new world here, you know, mm -hmm. so she's starting from scratch. Um, so I think a lot of people were expecting something that's not where she was going with this. Yeah. So like the Fae all grown up. Yes. Yeah. I think, and, I, and I'll mention this too, because book talk is like a huge thing. So if you happen to have TikTok or, you know, you've been to Barnes and Noble lately um, and you see the TikTok table, um, those kinds of books are really popular right now. Sarah mm -hmm. J. Mass is a really good example of that. Um, you know, with these fairy books that are really, really popular. And because she had such a popular series with that, she also wrote Spiderwit Chronicles. She's mm. written some mm -hmm. vampire books as well. So people have this very certain expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, she's a very popular YA author. So when Book of Night dropped, we have something completely different. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of those... We got a lot of negative reviews. We had a lot of good ones in there, too. But mm -hmm. um, seeing some of those early on negative reviews made honestly did make me a little hesitant I, mm -hmm. at first. You know, I was so excited, and I was you know, so looking forward to it. And I thought, oh, no. Mm -hmm. like, there's no way that I'm yeah. like, this, this can't be. <laughs> um, so I, when I did sit down and read it, I left all of that at the door. And I think mm -hmm. that's so important to do. Mm -hmm. You know, like leaving those expectations at the door because this, this might as well be a new author. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that causes a lot of issues for, for readers. Yeah. Because like we talked about last month with Pirate Latitudes. Absolutely. How much of the fans who didn't like it was because he tried something new. Yep. Yep. That was definitely it. And uh, we had these preconceived notions. Mm -hmm. You know, that we build up in our heads and is that's not the author's fault, you know, mm -hmm. that I've created this ideal, you yeah. know, work. Yeah. They're allowed to have fun and explore and do diff different things and new yeah. things. Absolutely. So, and, and sometimes it is bad. Yeah. Every once in a while. Yeah. And, and we're going to be honest with you. Like, if there's a book and it's just not good that we've picked, we're going to let you know. Because mm -hmm. we want you to, to you know, enjoy what what we've picked you know or no 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 to skip it and yeah. put something else on your tbr that you know you might actually enjoy mm -hmm. um if you've got similar taste to us 
you yeah. know, so, but what I will say is that I absolutely love this. So it did start, it did feel like it started out a little bit slow because we're, we're world building. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't necessarily get as much clarification on the magic system as I wish we would have gotten because mm -hmm. when we're dealing with fantasy and you're dealing with a new world, it's really important to get all of that world building. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the main, main issues a lot of readers had because she has such a beautiful, lush writing style okay. that definitely I'm one of those readers that sees a little movie when I read Yeah, and she's amazing for readers like me mm -hmm. where you can, you can fully build this world in your head. And there were some questions that I had. I didn't fully understand the magic system mm -hmm. for quite a while. And it wasn't until like the last third of the book where we got really into the meat and potatoes of the murder mystery aspect mm -hmm. and how the shadows were going to come into play and how important they were that I really got into it and was there turning those pages and I could not wait to find mm -hmm. out what was going to happen. It took me a long time to get to that point. But when I did, I was really glad. Then she announced there's going to be another book. Ooh. So then I liked it even more mm -hmm. because I thought, okay, this isn't an incomplete book. Like I'm mm -hmm. not going to be left with questions. This was our introduction to this world. There's going to be a follow-up. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you do pick this book up, know that there's, you're going to have those questions and you're going to be like, this better not be a standalone rest assured it's not there's there is another one coming so you're you know i'm sure we're going to get answers um you know i'm not sure how many books there's going to be in the series but mm -hmm. we do know there's going to be a follow-up so uh, that definitely changed my rating mm -hmm. from say like a three out of five to more of a four out of five because okay. yeah i know there's going to be more explanation and i'm not mm -hmm. going to be left hanging yeah yeah that's a really fine line that fantasy writers especially have to do. It's like, how much is too much? Yeah. And do I want to pour it all out into one book or do I want to try and do more? Oh my gosh, absolutely. Right. And, and as you can see, I mean, when I picked this up, I was a little worried because I'm a 600, 700 page mm -hmm. person. Like I just am like Priory of the Orange Tree, one of my favorite fantasies, you know, um, coming from that kind of high fantasy world, I was like, oh no, like what, what? this can't be a standalone, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's not, so we're, we're good. We're, yeah. We're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, crisis averted. Yay. Um, so yes, <laughs> I would, I would totally recommend it. Um, you know, if it, and recommend Holly Black in general, she's just fantastic. So if you're a YA reader, you've got some YA readers at home, you know, definitely mm -hmm. look into her work. We have a lot of her here at the library, um, a lot available on our online platforms like Hoopla and Libby and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. definitely give her a, yeah. a check out. Yeah. And even though these books are YA, fans of all ages, well, I would say teen and up. Yeah. Um, just because middle grade and younger wouldn't understand yeah wouldn't yeah understand what was going on. <laughs> but um but yeah i we both are big proponents of mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that it has a ya oh my gosh it's yeah. just as good absolutely and in some cases better than oh my gosh some yeah. of the adult. so many of my favorites are ya yeah and you know, it's actually really hard when we're picking these books like to to actually like break out of there. And I'm one of those weird people that I've got like horror, I've got fantasy, I've got YA, you know, and there's like, and when those mm -hmm. all come together, oh my gosh, those mm -hmm. are some of my favorite books. Yeah. Growing up, Goosebumps, you know, Fear Street, mm -hmm. that was my jam. Scary stories to tell in the dark, gotta love that, you know. Mm -hmm. So whenever you find something that gets you excited, who cares what the label is on the spine? Yeah. Like, check that thing out mm -hmm. and have a, a good time reading it. Yeah. Well, hey guys, thank you so much for joining us for another month of our podcast. Um, next month, we're actually going to change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we have a staff member that had a book that she read that she's just absolutely in love with. And we're going to have her on the podcast. So uh, her name's Savannah. She's going to be joining us next month. So we're going to be interviewing a guest. Yeah, yeah, and she's one of our new hires, yeah. newer hires, so come say hi. Yeah, absolutely. She works at the circulation desk, so you guys will get to meet her and um, find out what she's been reading. So we will catch you next month. Thank you. Bye. Bye.